everyone. Welcome to another episode of Impact Today. We are Mark and Victoria Bowling, evangelists and teachers of the Word of God. Thank you so much for joining us today. Get ready because we're going to be sharing some wonderful truths from the Word of God that will be life-changing for you. So grab a Bible and a pen and a notebook and take good notes so you can go back and look over it later. And we also want to encourage you to visit our website at globalimpactministries.com. When you go there, there's a link you can click on that will take you to all the episodes of Impact Today. You can also click on a link to subscribe to our podcast if you'd rather just listen to the messages. So before we get into the teaching today, Mark, do you have a miracle testimony to share with us? Amen. Yes, I do. <laughs> Should always have a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, again, we just came back from Asia and just preaching the simple gospel that Jesus took our place on at Calvary and uh, on the cross of Calvary. And there was a, a man there. Actually, I saw him in the crowd. I saw him when we prayed the mass prayer. I saw him put his hand over his ear. Mm. And um, when we asked for testimonies, he came up immediately and informed us that he had been, in his words, completely deaf in that one ear for 10 to 15 years. So he didn't know the exact amount, but it was minimally 10 years. And the Lord Jesus opened that ear. Hallelujah. That man was healed by the power of God. Jesus is alive today yes. and he still opens the ears of the deaf. He opens the eyes of the blind. He causes tumors to disappear. He is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So what's today's episode about? Today, we're continuing about the subject of Christ crucified. We're laying a foundation. Uh, these uh, teachings that we're given to you now are highlights from my book, A Strong Foundation in Christ. I want to encourage you to get your Bible notebook, like Victoria um, encouraged you already, but really write these scriptures down because a lot of the, uh, the sessions here were just simply mentioning verses. You need to have pen and paper ready. Write it down, look it up, get it established in your heart. Because listen, we're living in a day where there's much false doctrine and deception going around. And you don't want that. You want your life to be strong. Amen. And the only way you can be strong in every area of your life, whether it's your personal life, your marriage, your ministry, or your business, is to have a strong foundation under your feet. These teachings that we're giving to you right now uh, highlight the truths about this strong foundation that you need, and it will be a blessing to you. So well, without further ado, we're going to go to the teaching now, and may it be a blessing to you. Sickness, disease came into the earth after man had sinned. Poverty, lack, came into the earth after man had sinned. Every form of bondage, depression, fear, anxiety, guilt, shame entered the earth after man had sinned. We had sinned. We were separate from God. We were guilty and we were deserving of eternal punishment. God had said, the day you partake, the day you sin, you will die. The wages of sin is death. But the good news is the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the sin of people, you need to understand that. Now remember, in creation, if Adam and Eve were created without sickness and disease, if they were created without guilt and shame, if they were created without poverty and lack, if everything was good, that, that expresses what God's intent, what God's will is for you now. Hallelujah. If He wanted them sick, He would have created them with sickness, but He did not. They were created healthy. Amen. So that brings us now to the substitution of Jesus. Number one, creation of people. Number two, the sin of people. Number three, the substitution of our Lord Jesus Christ, which really this is the gospel message. Amen. 1 John 4, 8 says that God is love. 
John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So God in his great love for you and me sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to this earth. God the Son, or John 1, 1 calls him the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Hallelujah. You see, God needed a substitute. He needed someone who could die on our behalf. And the most righteous prophet of the Old Covenant still didn't qualify. Moses had sinned. David had sinned. Ezekiel had sinned. Every man has sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so if anyone was to die on our behalf, they wouldn't be dying on our behalf. They'd be dying for themselves. And so God... He didn't stop looking for a substitute. I'm, I'm speaking in human terms. You understand that God already knew. You know, He's not limited in knowledge like we are. So God turns to His Son, says, well, there's no one down there that's righteous. There's no one down there without sin. So you need to go. So Jesus came, born of a virgin, grew up to become a man, the grace of God upon him, tempted in every way like you and me, yet without sin. And he demonstrates the love of the Father God. He demonstrates the power of God. If you're going to present the gospel effectively, you always have to mention the miracle ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you look in the book of Acts, you'll notice by the fact that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are written, the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Mark, by the fact that they record the ministry and the miracles of Jesus should tell you we need to mention the miracle ministry of Jesus. But then you get into the book of Acts, for example, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Peter says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. The ministry of Jesus forever settles the issue, the will of God for your life. Because he said, I came not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Jesus' ministry was the will of God in action. But the main reason why he came was to become that substitute on the cross. Remember when John the Baptist saw him? He laid his eyes on the Messiah and he said, Look, everyone, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus goes to the cross and becomes our substitute. Listen to what Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5 says in the New American Standard 2020 version. It says this, However, it was our sickness that He Himself bore and our pains that He carried. Yet we ourselves assumed that He had been afflicted, struck down by God, and humiliated. But he was pierced for our offenses. He was crushed for our wrongdoings. The punishment for our well-being was laid upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Mm. Jesus went to the cross. And God the Father laid upon him all of our sin, our guilt, our shame transgressions, our iniquities. And with that, He laid on Him our sicknesses, our pains. He was afflicted. He was struck down by God Himself and humiliated, hanging naked on a cross with His flesh torn off His body from the, the scourging. But He was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our wrongdoings, now notice this, the punishment for our well-being was laid upon him. God wants you to be made whole, spirit, soul, and body. Amen.
This is the gospel message. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. I love this passage of scripture. Romans chapter 4, verse 25 says this. Jesus was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Amen. Notice, uh, you could say it like this. Jesus was delivered over unto the punishment of death because of our sins. So this is what's happening. Jesus is taking our place. He goes to the, the cross. God lays on him our sin. He's made sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Never forget it. Jesus took your place. Jesus bore your punishment. He endured your chastisement, suffered your penalty. Jesus paid for your crime. He died for your sins. He paid your debt. He suffered your diseases. He died with all of that. And then he was buried. And he put all that away for us. Died with it, was buried with it, put it away, and then he rose again without it. But look at this other passage of scripture, Isaiah 53, verse 6. We saw verse 4 and 5. Listen to verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Notice that. All we like sheep. We've all gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That's important you understand that. That's what iniquity is. It's going your own way. It's rebelling to what he wants and going your own way. I was trying to share the gospel recently to an older gentleman at a rental company. I was renting a car. My wife and I had flown into town to uh, actually uh, perform a a funeral for somebody. And uh, as I'm renting the car, uh, we said goodbye to the man, but I I stopped. I turned around and said, sir, you know that Jesus loves you? And uh, he said, yeah, I'm counting on that. I said, have you been born again? Long story short, he said, well, to each his own. To each his own. (laughs) Notice what Isaiah 53, 6 says. So he wasn't born again. He said he wasn't. And when I tried to talk to him about being born again, he said, no, to each his own. Notice what it says. We have turned everyone to his own way. It's iniquity. It's why Jesus went to the cross. Because everyone has this attitude. Attitude to each his own. And the Lord, or Jehovah God, has laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. Iniquity includes these three things. Number one, this word iniquity in the Hebrew, it's the word aeon. And it includes these three things. Number one, iniquity. Number two, the guilt of our iniquity. Number three, the consequence of or the punishment for our iniquity. And when Jesus went to the cross, All of that was laid on him, and he put it away. Hallelujah. God the Father raised him from the dead through the Holy Spirit. And Christ was raised from the dead because of our justification or pardon. Listen to Romans 4.25 in the Amplified Bible. Listen to this. It says, Christ was betrayed and crucified because of our sins and was raised from the dead because of our justification, our acquittal, absolving us of all sin before God. Hallelujah. So that when you stand before Almighty God, there's no sin. He sees innocence. He sees righteousness. That's the gospel. And it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. That's why I love Romans 1.16 because it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God 
unto salvation for everyone who believes. Everyone. Salvation there means wholeness, healing, health, salvation, preservation. It's the big package of everything that the blood of Jesus purchased for you and for me. Everywhere we've gone, we've seen miracles. And when you go and take the gospel and you preach it in its simplicity, miracles will abound. Amen. You might be listening and you need a miracle now. Believe the gospel. Call on his name. Miracles will abound. Let me tell you this story. I love this story. Uh, There was a, a family who attended one of our miracle festivals. They believed the gospel. They believed it. And their child, I think he's about three, about three or four years old, he had been struck with polio as an infant. And therefore, his, one of his legs didn't develop. He was weak. He could not stand at all. And one leg was about an inch shorter than the other and just kind of hung there, just kind of hung. There's no stability whatsoever. But they heard the gospel. They believed it. But during the miracle festival, it it appeared to them that nothing had happened, yet it was living in their hearts. So after the meeting's over, about a four-night meeting, I'm gone. They go to work. They come home. And in their little living space, they they, they hold their boy up in the middle. And they say, stand in Jesus' name. You are healed by Jesus' stripes. They let go and he starts to fall down to the ground. They hope they, they, they prevent him from falling. They tried that three or four times. Nothing seemed to happen. The second night, they did the same thing. Stand! Nothing seemed to happen. Third night, they did the same thing. Nothing seemed to happen. They did that one, two, three evenings in a row, holding him, letting go. He starts to fall. They catch him, saying, the gospel's true. By Jesus' stripes, you were healed. They go to bed. The fourth morning they wake up and that boy is standing in that room healed by the power of God. Amen. That is one of many, many miracles. Now remember the the first scripture we, we, we mentioned. He said, when I came to you, I made a determination. I'm not gonna know anything except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words, eloquent words, human wisdom. No, no, no. But in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Jesus said, you go into all the world and preach the gospel to every person. So in conclusion, to understand the gospel, you need to understand four things. Number one, the creation of people. Number two, the sin of people. Number three, Jesus' substitution. That's the gospel. We just shared that. And number four, our restoration. So it's not just one, two, and three. It's also number four, our restoration. And that leads us to the next lesson in which we'll begin talking about repentance from dead works. God God bless you, my friend. Wow, that was really good teaching. Praise God. Amen. If you need to get right with God, if you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and have all your sins washed away, Mark is going to pray with you and lead you in a prayer to do that right now. Hallelujah. Do it with all of your heart. Stop what you're doing. Either lift your hands as an act of surrender Or just put your hands on your heart as an outward sign that you're praying with all of your heart. Yes, amen. And say this after me. Dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I need a Savior. I believe. I believe. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is that Savior. Is that Savior. I call on the name of Jesus now. I call on the name of Jesus now. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. He died for my sins. He died for my sins. He was raised for my justification. He was raised for my justification. And I confess Him as Lord. I confess Him as Lord. My Savior. My Savior. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Come. 
Come. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. I repent of sin. I repent of sin. Wash me clean. Wash me clean. In your holy blood. In your holy blood. Make me brand new. Make me brand new. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I will follow you. I will follow you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend, if you prayed that prayer with all of your heart, I have good news for you. We announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. You're brand new. You stand innocent before Almighty God, and He loves you so much. Now, if you need healing in your body, I'm going to pray for you. So just close your eyes, lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would touch the people and heal them from every sickness and every disease. We command every pain and every sickness to go from the people now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we receive your healing anointing into our bodies now. We believe we receive. We thank you, God, for miracle life flowing like a river right now into all the people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to invite you to call the number on your screen and let someone know what Jesus has done for you. And if you're experiencing a miracle in your body right now, give that number a call. We can't wait to hear from you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a great day. Hello, friends. We are very thrilled to offer this book that's now available that I've written. It's been a book that's been in my heart for many years now. It's called A Strong Foundation in Christ, Living a Purposeful and Successful Life from Now into Eternity. It covers in detail the six foundational doctrines of our Lord Jesus Christ that's listed in Hebrews chapter six. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, the doctrine of baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. But we go into detail about each doctrine. It will prove to be a blessing in your life if you read it and really put it into practice. It has more than 400 pages, but it is fast, easy reading. Unless you look up all the verses, it can be a book where you just want to read as you're laying in bed or if you want to sit down at a desk and really study it it will prove to be a blessing to you so that you can have a strong foundation under your feet in your walk with god buy the book today and all things are possible to him who believes. We have an amazing miracle testimony that we'd like to share with you. One year we were in India doing a pastor's conference as well as a miracle festival. And in the morning time, before the pastor's conference started, this man comes into the, the sanctuary where we were hosting the conference with his head, one leg up high jumping or hopping, you could say, hopping to the front using a stick all the way to the front. And he comes to me and he says, can you pray for me? And I said, well, actually, why don't you have a seat and wait till after I teach the word? Well, I end up teaching the word, but we didn't even teach on healing. We was talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit and fire. And after I preached, we laid hands on all these pastors who wanted to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But in that moment, I felt, I'm going to go lay hands on that man. And I laid hands on him in the name of Jesus. Everyone speaking in tongues. We, you know, I let them pray for a bit and then they stopped. And then all of a sudden this man stood up and he said, sir, when you laid hands on me, some cool substance came out of your hands and went into me. I said, really? I said, well, it was like he said, this coolness came into me and I'm, I feel fine. I said, what do you mean do you feel fine? He says, I have no pain. I said, are you saying you're healed? He says, yes, I'm healed. I said, well, take off your, your bandages right now and jump up and down. He took off his bandages and started jumping up and down right there on the spot. He had a broken leg. I said, I want you to come to the, 
the crusade tonight and give us a testimony. He says, nope, I'm not coming tonight. I'm going to the doctor. I'm going to get an x-ray and I'm going to come the next night with a before and after x-ray. And sure enough, he did that. He was completely healed by the power of God. When you partner with Global Impact Ministries, you are sowing into miracle festivals and pastors' conferences, resulting in multitudes being saved and healed, churches planted and revival. You're sowing into the liberation of enslaved, persecuted Christians in the brick kilns of Asia. You're sowing into this broadcast, which is aired around the world, seeing many saved, healed, and encouraged, and so much more. Become a partner and sow your best seed today.